often misused, the true definition of the word relates to something far more sinister. Professor Jeremy Coyd is a forensic Alright, we might have audio. Who knows? Okay. For over 40 uh, years. From teenage this is going to be my next attempt at a live coding Haskell project Euler problem. Um, I suspect this one might be a little on the boring side, if anything. So, fingers crossed. I've never actually been confident going into a Euler problem before, which is actually a bit of a worry. Um, but anyway, first I'm just going to get a shell going, um, a shell program going. Uh, Mad uh, let's mad tell everyone what and we're behavior. doing. Euler A, the largest product in a series. Uh, then I like to keep around these the term test ones and implement them as a test. This number the will actually need and uh, that's a problem which I like to chuck at the top. One of the, things that were the program that description. Okay. Well, first, I'm going to have to concatenate all these suckers. Uh, that's going to be the best way to do that. Psychologists have defined a list of nine characteristics associated with narcissistic personality disorder, or NPD. Many of us display these traits, but learn to control them. Excuse me, let's hope I didn't mangle anything. And that's going to be our input string. Uh, let's call that series. Chuck it in quotes and deal with them as characters, I reckon, is going to be the way to go. Let's just to make sure it looks alright. Uh, I want to put a dollar sign in somewhere. I gotta get better at using them. I don't use them much. Then I won't need brackets, and we should be in a runnable state, which is always good. Bam! It looks like a giant series of numbers, and the text we're expecting. Okay. I'm gonna not actually print it out all the time. It's much more manageable. Okay. So the 1,000 digit number, the 4,000 digits and the 1,000 digit number, half a year to learn your job. Uh, 9989. So 9989 is a test. Uh, so let's put our test in instead. That's my ego coming Although Frank displays three traits associated with narcissistic personality disorder, to be clinically diagnosed, you need to have five, five eight, or three, more two. dominating your character at the same time. Such individuals have personalities that can border on the unhealthy. Three, two, and then... Everybody seemed uh, very shaken up by September 11th. And I so thought... So four adjacent York. series and the 13 adjacent. So this is going to be... Four... For some, these are controllable, and like a pressure gauge, having five or more, all in the red, can define an individual as having MPD. Oh, in other words, a true egomania. brackets. Professionals are Frank displays the larger than my rocks ego at their screens right video. now. Well, I can't tricks, actually run that yet, but no uh, but adding just one more trait can make a dramatic difference. Right. Hear about some disaster and people would go, "Oh God, I can't believe it!" And it would be obviously shaken. All mean, right, so you know, I'm just I'm adjacent series. So what? Um, Data 
Raven mm. sits on the next rung of the ladder. Eh. Alright, so that's fine. Associated with MPD. Do, do, do. And the most dominant one. So we want to partition it into groups of each of the largest series. So of series of sides. Yeah. I felt that very much on September 11th. I mean, everybody seemed very shaken up by September 11th. And I thought, so I don't want to take I thought, well, this is a normal. Most people don't feel as disconnected from the rest of humanity. Throw I mean, back out not this an array of strings. People in my town were... Gathering out on the um, street and hugging and crying. And this would be each of the series like, wow, that I have to test. Wrong with me, okay. You know, I don't, I'm not getting this. Lack of empathy is, is one of the key nothing. features of NPD. It's very subtle. They don't really um, care. They don't care if you're hurt. It won't, they won't be sad if science. you're heartbroken. These individuals are often unable to love. They don't have true, deep feelings yes. of caring for others. And actually, lack of true feelings, uh, lack of feelings of guilt, lack of feelings of remorse in the more severe cases of NPD can actually be facilitate you getting what you want. No, no, no. You don't feel sorry because you've hurt somebody or somebody's lost because you've conned them or you've committed Search. a fraud, then what the hell? You get on. David's lack of empathy not only affects his outlook and attitude to others, it also affects his perception of himself. As a result, some of life's most emotional moments appear to pass him by. I went to my father's funeral, and people, you know, who are barely related to my dad are standing around crying. I wasn't happy that my father died, but, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't upset enough to cry. And I don't know why that is, I mean, because there's a certain amount of emotional barrenness involved in narcissism. Oh, yeah, I forgot to say what many of. considered to be the happiest day of their lives. <laughs> type of. I had no intention of being emotional. Okay. So that's no not so bad. This one <laughs> isn't though. So now we've got an end. Um, so now we want X concatenated with take in. You want me to get married? Fine, I'll do it. You know, I I will I will show up. I'll go to your wedding, but uh, and I'll say your words, but it means nothing to me. If I meet a bridesmaid there, I don't know what might happen. David paints a lonely oh, existence of one. someone who has just four traits of NPD. Can you take zero? Because, yeah, that to might be simplify. Diagnosed, you need five or more. <laughs> so, how can one tell? <laughs> Not so lucky. Uh, I couldn't match string with char in X. Depending on how many times you answer yes oh, to the following yeah, questions, it may cool. mean that you suffer from NPD. Do people often fail to appreciate your very special talents or accomplishments? Sorry. Have people Couldn't told you that you have too high an opinion of yourself? Of Do you think enough about the power, oh. fame, or recognition that will be yours someday? When you have a problem, do you almost always insist on seeing the top person? Is it very important to you that people pay uh, attention to you no. or admire you in some way? Int and do you feel that you deserve minus. special treatment? Do you often expect better people to do what you ask without question because of who you are? Do you often find it necessary to step on a few toes to get what you want? Would you say that you're not really interested in I hate myself. or feelings? Are you often envious of others? Actually, do you find that there are very few oh no, this people that are really worth anything. your time okay, and attention? Fine. My product's gonna have to Thank be. Thank you very much. Let's just get if good you at it. Said yes, five uh, times or N minus. It could mean that you have NPD. Malignant Self Love by Dr. Sam Backman is one of the first true attempts to understand the narcissist. <laughs> the narcissist uh, from is a particular drug thing called narcissistic supply. Narcissistic supply is a fancy term and it describes all forms of attention, there both we go. positive and negative. Nice work, Tiger. Very utilitarian, very Let's actually very see flexible. if that works. Uh, this is a good time for they that. What I call Load out they are your eight. To diagnose the weaknesses, uh, vulnerabilities, soft spots, of size. So let's take three out of one to ten. ten. And to put it this should give us one, two, three, two, three, four, four, five, six. 
Oh dear. Narcissists will never regret what they oh, do sure. simply because they do not hold themselves responsible yeah. for the consequences of sure. their actions. Serious Crossing uh, these individuals nice. can be a daunting experience. Oh, because they're meant to be strange. You have to do it on a daily basis. Okay. The workplace uh, is a familiar backdrop for tales of the evil What about 10 years I experienced incidents of bullying? I would often sit in a car and not be able to drive home because I was either so angry or I was just in floods of tears. The general manager had a habit of breaking down someone's reputation and then building it back up. And I became his target. Uh, Working for that. Series of size in. Charlotte was once a successful personnel manager for a high street store. Soon her dream job turned into a nightmare when her female boss became there we go. Life One, two, three. When I first met her, she two. was extremely um, charming, very friendly and personal. So and if, I felt that the oh, would God. have a very strong working relationship. God. It was within a couple of months that things actually started and to change. Her behaviour became very, very cool. She became very obtuse with me and seemed to constantly be critical like, of the work that I was doing. Excess. Adrian was a manager at a software company until a new boss joined the firm. Uh, well, pause. Oh, yeah, because I didn't actually do anything else. Okay, that's not good. So we're going to... Oh my god, we're gonna let otherwise drop which was a, a just to see if we can pass second up. And he said, well, your Did performance is being monitored. Nice. People are watching you. Ellen, the school teacher, claims the headmistress launched a smear campaign designed to ruin her. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe I'm making him cry. That's so bad. That was what was crime. It made me feel very nervous. It would make me feel I was being watched. The black shadow coming into the classroom. Most narcissists become bullies in the workplace. They taunt, they torture, they sadistically inflict pain, sometimes unnecessarily. Uh, Clearly let's on try their that. Okay. They are obsequious to um, the higher ups and sadists to their underlings. I became totally lucky in confidence. I, I felt crushed, so I knew that I was under greater pressure than I could. I, didn't feel like I, I became there. extremely explosive at home because I was a complete nightmare to them. No way was I ever going to have a mental breakdown. But I thought it was. I'm not a person who would ever right. commit suicide. But the thoughts were very persistent. Narcissists resent weaknesses, resent vulnerabilities. And as a result, there isn't. Oh, yeah, because I people, haven't actually. People. That means that narcissists. Doesn't matter how right I can get it if it's the children gonna drop off the, the end of the world. Sick people, um, weak people, vulnerable people. Actually, this provokes in the narcissist a sadistic impulse to inflict further pain, to exploit the vulnerability. Let's try that. To enhance okay. the weakness, to prey upon it. Narcissists are predators. Uh, and wounded enemies yeah, are the ideal prey. Finding someone with five should have got at least something and is greater than unsurprising. Oh, it's far more common to find someone who knows a narcissist rather than someone that's to being one. Dr. Sam Vaknin pointed us in the right direction. Leading a cult like where critical spectrum. faculties are suspended, where people are mere instruments of gratification, where discipline is maintained, where criticism is unheard of. This is the wet dream of the narcissist, to be at the center of a group of unreflecting, unthinking, totally oh, yeah. obedient wow. people. The cult leader is the perfect example of an extreme narcissistic personality. Six. All right, so we can partition that stuff now. The most dominant ones being excessive <clears throat> for admiration and exploitation of others. So we get a series of size count. Bob Pardon has studied cults for 15 years. He runs a self-help for victims right. and believes religion is the perfect tool for a narcissist to control others. Uh, we're going to be dealing this time.
son with narcissistic personality disorder. And a number of years ago, Judy and I came across the material of a man by the name of Sam Batman. So that's going to get us all of the possible before, sequences. We found that his material has been extremely helpful uh, to us. And then we want to filter the largest. Uh, folks who have come out of destructive groups. Uh, well, from our perspective, the profile of a cult leader seems to fit almost like a hand in a glove. A narcissistic so we want to take a series value. To cult leadership Seri take a series and create its value. Religion so we need is a tailor made for their fantasies. Examples of David Berg's um, narcissistic personality disorder. Uh, he certainly had grandiose feelings. I mean, he felt that he was called by God as God's end time prophet. Uh, he was predicting the end of the world numerous times. He was certainly obsessed with fantasies of unlimited success and fame. So there are numerous, numerous examples of Berg fitting NPD across the board. For those born into Berg's cult, they have no choice but to follow his idealism such as the Jones sisters, who witnessed Berg's extreme narcissism from an early age. I was not that Berg was replacing God, it was that he was the mouthpiece of God, and God spoke through him. So obviously we couldn't, so we didn't, we didn't understand God, we were just, you know, the stupid children, and he was the one that was going to explain God to us. So what he said was God. David Berg often said that he, he was the only one with the wisdom. See how that goes. He was the only where? one who interpreted biblical prophecy. Where, oh, he was where, the last oh, where? You're working before, eh? 24 minutes. Uh, uh, but sometimes they are havens for something just as uh, 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 Berg oh, yeah. created his own Bible oh, really. in order to spread the idea of promiscuity. He was yeah. involved in all kinds of things. He glorified just sex on a level that is beyond yeah. understanding practically. Strange. Berg even used his wife Karen to entice new followers. He got this idea, um, him and, him and oh, Karen Derby, to go out and, and stuff, and <laughs> he, he would get a kick and enjoy Very watching her flirt with these men, men her age. Let's give it something and, I know, uh, like you know, two times two. She should take them back to the the hotel room or house nice. and speak with them. You know, he didn't sell it two. to the membership as prostitution, he sold two. it as flirty fishing. Four. He was the fisher, Bam. the women were the bait with the hook, and uh, these lonely men, lots of money. Why does this fish. happen? Bird's anyway, idealism began let's to catch on. Try as the membership that grew, we can. shockingly, Bird grew anyway, the age limit. Uh, so now we can get a series value for each of those, so we can actually. Uh, we're having sex right there every single night in your room. Your teacher would have sex right there. We'd have classes, live classes demonstrating how to have sex, teaching us. We'd have date nights where we'd pair off as even as little three, two, uh, three year olds, and you know, have sex, are. basically except for some of the kids actually were doing it realistically because they've been taught in a live class. So we should you know, just about have all the components I need now so I can get the series as of time, so the possible sequences. There's an adult man in the commune that took a fancy to you and couldn't do much um, about it really. again hopefully we'll be able to actually woohoo tab complete and run and stuff uh, why is it? Uh, let's just try run uh, uh, execute this is all three a man haunted by a vision of hell on earth vision. a searing social yeah. critic mr okay. huxley 27 years um, ago wrote brave new world a Let's novel that predicted catch. that someday the entire world would live under a frightful dictatorship. Today, Mr. Huxley says that his 
fictional yes, world of horror is probably stuff. just around the corner for all of us. We'll find out why in a moment. The Mike Wallace Interview, presented by the American Broadcasting Company, in association with the Fund for the Republic, brings you a special television series discussing the problems of survival and freedom in America. Good evening, right, I'm Mike Wallace. Tonight's guest, Paul DeCoupley, is a man like of letters uh, as disturbing as he is to No input files. Born in England, oh. now a resident of California, Mr. Huxley has written some of the most electric yeah, novels and social oh, criticism yes. of this century. There we go, that's better. He's just finished a series of essays called Enemies of Freedom, in which he outlines and defines uh, some of the threats to our freedom in the United States. Mr. Hey. Huxley, right off the bat, let me ask you this. As you see it, who and what are the enemies of freedom That's here in the United States? quick. Two, three, well, five, I don't think you can say who in the United States. I don't say any finished or personal to trying to rob people of their freedom. But I do think, so that, that, first of all, that there are a number of impersonal forces which are pushing in the direction so uh, of less and less see freedom. If we've got this right. And I also think that there are a number of technological devices which anybody who wishes to use can use uh, to accelerate this process of going away from freedom, uh, imposing uh, control. What are these series. forces and these devices? Largest product in a I series, a big uh, number. What main is the value forces? of the product? Uh, the first of them uh, is not that in exceedingly there. important in the United States at the present Four, time, though three, very important three, in other oh, countries. Uh, this is the Force which in general terms can be called overpopulation. Fingers. The, the mounting pressure of population yeah! pressing upon existing resources. Piece of cake. And this, of course, All right, I knew that would be an easy one apart from compiling it. But anyway, there you go. Uh, one more. Let's just take a, a simple test. Uh, you'll challenge the time down. of the birth of Christ and the landing of the Mayflower. 